So I'm just starting to work in, in the woodshop again a fair amount, uh, getting ready to build a trailer out here. Uh, and uh, there's some things that I've been uh, yeah, fixing a bit in the last few days. Uh, one of the biggest ones has been the table saw. So this table saw has scared me for a while. It hasn't had the proper safety equipment, uh, and uh, it really hasn't been set up very well. I uh, am getting to the point where I'm almost happy with it, uh, and wanted to uh, show an example of uh, ripping and cutting on the table saw and uh, how to do it safely, just to give an idea. So first of all, uh, let's look at uh, some of the uh, changes that I've uh, made to the uh, uh, table saw. Um, I've added a uh, zero clearance uh, insert here. This is important uh, because uh, it uh, means that uh, you uh, really don't have to uh, worry about things falling down beside the blade and jamming quite as much as, uh, as you used to. Uh, if you do use a dado blade or uh, some other uh, blade on the table saw, uh, the original uh, fence, or the original insert rather, uh, is up here on the top shelf. Uh, uh, you should also uh, note uh, the additional long piece of uh, planed board, which you can make more zero clearance inserts. If you want to use a dado blade or something like that, you can make your own as well, or if this one gets scarred up for some reason. The second thing uh, is that the uh, fence was uh, really not uh, uh, very effective. Uh, it had a gap at the back uh, and uh, it uh, uh, never did line up on the, uh, uh, the gauge for the, uh, uh, the, the ruler at the uh, side. Uh, and uh, so uh, I've added a uh, board to, uh, uh, to this uh, that uh, should allow it to uh, sit flush against the table uh, and uh, be a uh, bit more uh, solid clamping uh, platform. Next, you can see that I've uh, got a uh, fingerboard clamp to this. There are a couple of these around, and the idea behind the fingerboards uh, is that uh, they'll hold the uh, board down, so the only thing you have to worry about as you're ripping a piece is keeping it pushed up against the fence and feeding it through. Uh, oh, one other thing about the uh, fence is that our fence is uh, not uh, great at staying square. So I like to uh, check it with a square uh, each time I move it or uh, set it up. Uh, and I either use this uh, front edge of the uh, table, or as I'm doing here, uh, use the uh, miter uh, groove. Uh, in the miter slot uh, there, uh, if you have a nice even uh, yeah, distance all the way across, if you happen to be on the miter slot, or you can use that uh, with the uh, a straight edge or something to uh, check square against. Okay, so with all that set up, uh, I want to uh, talk about a couple things. I'm going to uh, rip this board, which is the uh, process of uh, making a lengthwise cut on it. Um, and I'm going to first set my uh, uh, blade height uh, so that uh, it's coming about half or three quarters of the way up the, uh, uh, the teeth. Uh, uh, this is uh, not critical. Uh, as long as you're coming over the board, uh, you can rip at any height, uh, but it's a little bit safer not to have a huge amount of excess material there. The next thing is I want to make sure that I have a uh, really nice flat edge on uh, this. We've got a uh, great jointer in the uh, 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 shop here. Uh, 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 thanks to Lee for uh, bringing this in. Uh, and uh, so it's really easy to get a straight edge to work against the uh, fence with. Um, so just run it across the uh, jointer, get your nice straight edge to run on the fence, and then you're assured that you'll have a uh, nice straight cut. The next thing is, is that uh, when ripping, I always like to have the guard on. Uh, uh, and now, uh, we play a little bit fast and loose with this at times because it gets in the way for some operations. But for ripping, having that uh, yeah, splitter on there to ensure the wood doesn't pinch back across the blade and catch, and having these anti-kickback pawls, uh, uh, which uh, it should stop it from flying back at you uh, if uh, it does kick back for some reason, are both really good things. And the last thing on safety gear, uh, I'm really uh, enjoying uh, uh, this style of dust mask these days. Uh, this is the 3M9211, and uh, it's uh, just working a lot better with my glasses uh, than uh, are the uh, other style of, uh, of dust masks. Okay, so we'll get uh, cutting here in just a second. Okay, so with the uh, dust mask on uh, and the uh, board nicely planed, uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, rip this uh, down just to take a, a thin slice off of the, uh, uh, the edge here. Okay. So uh, I'll push down my uh, blade guard here, check to make sure that I'm plugged in, cut this off. You'll notice that I'm standing to the side of the cup. This is to make the dead kick back. Whenever possible, I don't want to be in the way. Thank you. 
Now the saw is off, we can look at it. Nice clean cut there. Next we're going to look at ripping. So you've got to do a couple things differently when you rip. Take out the earplugs too. <coughs> First thing uh, is that you'll have to take off the uh, blade guard. Always a good idea when you're uh, you, you know, making some changes on the saw to unplug it first. So I'm going to unplug it. Take off my little scrap. Take off the blade guard, set it aside, now for cross cutting uh, I don't actually uh, need uh, this fence because uh, I'm going to be using the cross cut slot instead. Here's the cross cut slot that I've made. Uh, and uh, you're gonna take it, uh, put the green stripe towards the, uh, the saw when you're putting it on, uh, and slide the two slips of hardwood uh, into the miter gauge here. And you'll see it slides nicely over uh, and onto the back. I'm not gonna be too concerned with measurements here, uh, but uh, if uh, you were, and you usually are when you're cutting, uh, you would go ahead and take your uh, tape measure uh, and uh, measure down for the length of the board you want. Hold it tight against the back edge. Remember to readjust your blade height since the crosscut sled itself is uh, you're, you're taking some of the height up now. Again, to about uh, half to uh, uh, three quarters of a uh, blade uh, notch width above the, uh, the board. Slide it all the way off the blade, and then we'll cut. Oops, plugging the saw back in, of course. Now, if you're doing multiple cuts, I have seen some people run the uh, cross cut sled back, move the uh, piece over, run it through without ever stopping the saw. Um, can do that if you feel less safe with it. Uh, I tend to like to stop the saw and move it back and readjust and remeasure, uh, just because as I'm coming back, if there was any little bit of wiggle, uh, that could catch the saw and kick on back. Uh, so I like to push it all the way clear and then stop the saw and reposition. Anyways, um, that's uh, a few safety tips on our uh, table saw setup. Uh, it's a little bit safer and easier than I uh, think it was before I started messing with it. Let me know if you have any problems with it or if you have any other uh, changes to suggest. Thanks a lot.